Hello everyone, I hope you're doing alright. Today we're talking about the Darkness Tank. Perhaps the most punishing and rewarding tank spec in the entire game. Let's talk about it. Brief scrim as usual, I'm not an expert on this spec, I'm just a nerd. I play a lot of Swotor. But if there's anything that I missed, anything that you recommend, feel free to leave down in the comments below. I'm sure your fellow players will appreciate it. Alright, stats very quickly. Get like five to 6,000 shield and then throw everything else into Absorb if you're in PvE. If you're in PvP though, you can kind of just throw everything into crit and you should be ready to rock and roll. Our tacticals, there is a lot of options for our tacticals, frankly. The ones you should focus on first should be two cloaks, which is going to be exceptionally helpful for us with choosing a lot of mechanics and friend of the force for our helping out our comrades, especially our very dumb DPS that like to stand in dumb things or when you want to like cleanse a DPS that doesn't have a cleanse for themselves. If you have neither of these options, you can go with Life Warden. That should already be in your bag somewhere if you've been playing for a little while. There are other options out there, but frankly, just start with like two cloaks and friends of the force and you should be ready to rock and roll. You're gonna have to spend a lot of tech frags if you are in darkness because we have a lot of options. Speaking of options, First Legendary is going to be Force Resistance, which is just going to give you a flat 3% DR. It's nice. It's very, very nice. It helps us survive a little bit longer. The second Legendary that I personally like to run is going to be a Dynamic Force Package. For one, I already had it because I had it for my DPS, which is very nice. For two, it gives us an extra like 5% crit chance because of the stats here, which is pretty fantastic. And for three, it gets us back our faster Recklessness. Recklessness is one of our primary cooldowns. I personally like this a lot. I like generating the extra threat. I'm also kind of lazy. However, if you want to run full mid tank, you can also pick up the ballast package or ballast point package here. I'm personally not going to because I don't play a lot of whole lot of sin tank. I don't feel like investing in the tech frags. However, if you want the extra absorber and defense stats, you can totally take ballast point. It's going to give you a little bit of CC immunity every time you hit your deflection button. The, where the stats are much more useful than the actual description. Personally, I would rather just keep my DPS for dynamic force package. That's just me though, all right? Now, looking over at the combat styles. Once again, we have a lot of options here. I would recommend setting up two loadouts, one for single target and one for AOE. So let's talk about the single target first. Opening up, I take Agonizing Volts, or Antagonizing Volts. It's gonna give us essentially extra crit chance, damage and threat on our Depredating Volts. It's pretty fantastic. Up the line here though, all these options are perfectly viable. I would take Spike if you're leveling. I personally like Energize Shock for the extra shock damage. And you can take Force Magnetism if you want the extra movement speed. It's kind of up to you, uh, but I like to default back to Energize Shock. That's just my personal play style. Twilight Ward. All the wards here are a little funky because the back half of all these utilities rely on ward being broken. And most of the time, ward will expire instead of breaking. So we don't really care about the back half here. Personally, I like Twilight Ward. This combines very well with the legendary that I choose to run, which reduces the recklessness cooldown. So I personally like Twilight Ward. However, you can take Gloom Ward if you really want to. If there's a mechanic where you really need Force Cloak, you can take Dusk Ward. It's kind of useless though. Personally, stick with Twilight Ward. I think it's just the most helpful. Overcharged Saber is kind of the default choice here. None of the other two options really you know, stand up in comparison to it. I personally like Fade here. Extra cooldown Force Cloak is pretty fantastic along with the extra duration, especially when combined with some of the later tacticals that we take here. I take Obfuscating Speed. I like the extra movement speed, especially for a tank. However, we'll talk about the AOE in like two seconds, all right? Moving the line here, all three of these options are perfectly viable. I know I'm giving you like no recommendations whatsoever. It, The answer is it kind of depends, all right? As sad as that is to say. Most of the time, I like Overload just because it gives us the ability to move around a whole bunch of mobs. However, if you're in like a boss fight, you can take Severing Slash for that little bit of like 5% damage reduction, which is like, okay, eh, not great, not terrible. Sometimes you need to CC, so you take Whirlwind. It kind of depends on your current situation. Personally though, I would default back to Overload. You can take Severing Slash in like single target boss fights. It's kind of up to you. And then finally, I like Shroud of Madness here. Force Cloak giving two seconds of Force Shroud is a great way to purge, especially like dot effects. It's, it's very, very helpful. You should probably be taking this more times than not. 
However, there is an AoE build here. The primary difference, let me just activate Darkness AoE, is that we take Chain Volts, which is going to be giving our Depredating Volts over to a bunch of different targets to increase our AoE damage. And then we also take Lambast for the extra AoE on Lambast, or I'm sorry, for Lacerate. This is really like your AoE spam. This is great for like flashpoints and questing, etc. Not as useful for like single target boss fights, but if you want to be like questing and doing a whole lot of damage, a surprising amount of damage actually for a tank, definitely take Lambast and Chained Volts instead. All right, let me get back to a ship and then we'll keep talking. All right, let us talk about tanking. As the tank, it's your job to get hit in the face. All right, your goal is to gather the attention of everyone in the area and make sure that they're hitting you instead of them hitting like them really squishy healers or a really stupid DPS, all right? To make sure that the target is currently hitting us, we're gonna turn on target of target. So we're going to go into our user interface, user interface editor, and make sure this little target of target is enabled, which is going to tell us like, sir, right now this operations dummy isn't targeting anyone. If I taunt the dummy, boop, now I can tell that he's targeting me. This is the easiest way to make sure that the boss and or all the ads are actively hitting you instead of like hitting your friends, all right? How do we get the boss to actually start hitting us? Well, we generate this thing called threat. Every time you do healing and damage in this game, you generate a whole lot of threat. The most obvious way to generate threat is, as we mentioned, doing damage. There are a couple of key things you need to know about doing damage in this spec. Let's talk to them very quickly, all right? We have a couple of key abilities that we'll talk through one by one here. The first two are our Wither and our Discharge. Wither and Discharge generate a whole lot of threat. For example, Wither applied to the target, boop, it's going to slow all the targets in the area, which is very nice. It's going to make all targets deal 5% less melee damage. It's very nice. You wanna be keeping your Wither on the target pretty much as often as possible. It's also a gigantic AOE, which is very, very helpful for clearing out a whole bunch of packs. So basically spam Wither as often as possible. Boop, Wither. The second important ability here is going to be our Discharge. Discharge has a unique effect because we are currently in darkness called Torment. Discharge is now a massive AOE. It's also going to reduce their accuracy by 5%, which is very nice and it's going to make your Lacerate do more damage to these targets. So you use Discharge pretty much on cooldown. It's a pretty fantastic ability. We wanna be smashing these two abilities as often as possible as they both generate a large amount of threat for us. All right, so first thing off the bat, these two abilities, smash them over and over and over again. Boop and boop. Now, let's quickly talk about using our lightsaber. The main ability that we're gonna to use to our lightsaber is our Thrash. Now Thrash, frankly, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It consumes a fair bit of force, but it helps us because every time you hit the target with a melee attack, you have about a 50% chance to make your shot glow. This is gonna make your shock essentially do more damage. It's pretty fantastic. So we want to be spamming Wither and Discharge and then using Thrash as kind of a filler ability. So that way we can make our shock glow, boop, and then it does a bunch of extra damage. You're gonna also notice here that doing melee damage to the target makes your maul glow. If maul is glowing, smash it. If shock is glowing, smash it. That's gonna be a recurring theme for doing damage in the spec is once you get past the defaults of wither and discharge over and over and over again, if it's glowing, smash it. If not, use thrash to proc these abilities. Now you're gonna notice here that now Depredating Bolts is glowing. The reason Depredating Bolts is glowing is because every time you use a Wither and a Shock, you will generate up to three stacks of Harness Darkness. Once you have three stacks of Harness Darkness, you can use Wither and slowly build a small amount of damage reduction and, de I'm sorry, you can use Depredating Bolts for a small amount of damage reduction and it's just gonna do more damage. Once again, it kind of falls into the category of if it's glowing, smash it. All right, all right. So wrapping up one more time, Wither and Discharge pretty much on cooldown, Thrash to, cro to proc our other abilities, Shock and Maul when they're glowing, filling with Thrash, smashing Wither, and then if it's glowing, hit it. 
I wish I could tell you that it's more complex than that, but it's really not. The only thing that changes is if you go into like an AOE situation, our rotation becomes a whole lot more simple. We use wither and discharge, and then we lacerate. And then when that's done, you lacerate again, and you lacerate, and you lacerate, and you lacerate. Now, if you are using the AOE depredating volts, you can always use the depredating volts as well. It's kind of up to you. But that's really as easy as it is. Essentially, as a tank, you can kind of just hit the glowing buttons. All right? You don't have to think too hard about it. Just wither and discharge and glowing buttons. However, doing damage isn't the only way we're going to be generating threat. We also have a very high threat generating ability here called force pull. Now, force pull will pull the target closer to you, but it also generates a whole lot of threat very, very quickly. So if you ever don't have a taunt and you lose the boss or you just need to like pull a mob onto you, force pull is a fantastic little ability that most tanks actually kind of forget about. All right. So we want to be using our force pull, usually in the opener to generate a whole bunch of threat and then go in and just spam again, wither, discharge, hit the glowing buttons over and over and over again. And then that's really it when it comes to doing damage as a tank. That's all you need to know for now. All right. All right, good. However, there are other ways that we can be generating threat in the form of our taunts. For example, we have our single target mind control and our mass mind control, which does a AOE, which is an area of effect. It taunts all the enemies in the area. Now taunt does a couple of things. First thing it does is it forces the target to attack you for six seconds, which is pretty handy, but it also generates it puts your threat at the equal level to the highest person in the raid, all right? So it's gonna give you the instant benefit of having the boss attack you, and it's gonna give you the opportunity to jump your threat up to the top, all right? So if you ever lose a boss, or if there's a threat drop mechanic, a lot of Flashpoint bosses have like a threat drop mechanic where they're like, kick the tank away and he'll start to shoot a DPS, use, use taunt, and then it will force the boss to attack you, and then, Make sure, make sure that you have the largest amount of threat. All right? Now, note that in PvP, there is no such thing as threat. However, if you taunt a target, they will do 30% less damage to everyone that's not you. So we want to be throwing out our taunts pretty much as often as possible to make sure that, you know, they're doing less damage to our friends. The final way that we can be really managing our threat here is with this ability called Guard. Now, Guard is semi-useful. It's going to make the targeted player, usually a friend, like say Ashara here. Hello, Ashara. You've now been guarded. It's going to make Ashara take 50% less damage and then redirect that damage into me. So it's going to help her survive from a pure damage standpoint. It's also going to make Ashara generate 25% less threat. So usually what you want to do is you want to find the DPS player that has like the biggest schlong and then throw the guard on them. All right. Typically, this is going to be like an AP power tech or a Fury Marauder. Someone that has a lot of burst damage in the opener that's going to be a complete monkey and not pop their threat drop. Guard a DPS, especially in PvE. Please don't throw your guard in the healer. Healing does not generate that much threat. Find a DPS that's looking, you know, pretty juicy and throw the guard on them. Now, note in PvP, don't just throw your guard on one person. You want to be swapping your guard around to the person that's currently taking damage. If you don't throw your guard on the person that's currently taking damage and your guard is sitting on, say, like Ashara here, who's at full health, uh, you're not being very useful to your team. So please be swapping guard if you are in PvP. That's the basics of generating threat. However, as a tank, it's not just our job to take the damage, it's also our job to mitigate the damage. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that it's your duty to pop your defensive cooldowns appropriately to not overwork your healers, all right? Your healers are already big, busy enough healing the monkey DPS that stood in the stupid. They don't need to be pumping as much heals as, into you as they need to be like correcting all the errors that the DPS are making, all right? So our goal is to pop our defensive cooldowns appropriately to make sure that we're taking as little damage as possible. All right? Now, as a Sin tank, we technically have light armor, which means our natural damage reduction is actually very low. However, we compensate for this by having a high shield chance. 
specifically because of this first ability here called Dark Ward. Now, I mentioned Dark Ward previously. What Dark Ward does is it increases your shield chance by a significant amount. So say I'm going to go into my stats here. I'm going to scroll on down to my shield chance. You can see here right now I have a 43% shield chance. If I pop my Dark Ward, boop, now I have a 61% shield chance. All right? What Dark, Ward, what Dark Ward does is it gives you 15 of these stacks of Dark Ward. And then every time you take damage and shield that damage, you will lose a stack of Dark Ward with a small chance to regenerate the, the, the stack. Don't worry about that. All right? Now... If you wanted to min-max Dark Ward, you would, in theory, wait until you got hit enough so that way you either have like one or two stacks left, or you would wait until it's right about to fall off. Because every time you shield an attack, let's see if I can pull this up here, every time you shield an attack that consumes Dark Ward, your shield absorption will go up by 1%. So what does that mean? Well, when we look at our stats here for defensive, you can see here your shield chance and your shield absorption. Shield chance just means what percent chance is it that you're going to shield an attack. So you can see here we apply Dark Ward, shield chance very high. But our shield absorption is the actual percentage that the damage is going to be reduced by. All right? So it's a, they, they're separated just a little bit. Just know shield chance, chance to actually reduce the damage. Shield absorption is how much the damage is actually reduced. Right? And so in theory... When you consume a, a stack of Dark Ward, the shield absorption chance will go up and up and up, up to 10 times, which is uh, nice. However, however, Dark Ward stacks are actually kind of rarely consumed. It's more likely that Dark Ward is going to fall off and then you're going to forget about it. Additionally, Dark Ward only has a 10 second cooldown. Now, in like a month or two, when you start to get a feel for like, Dark Ward and how many stacks you have left and how long you have until it has to refresh, then you can start worrying about like min-maxing the absorb chance generated by consuming Dark Wards. But for right now, for the purpose of this video, you're going to smash Dark Ward pretty much on cooldown. All right? You're going to hit Dark Ward every single time it comes off cooldown. It doesn't have a GCD, so you can hit it literally whenever. And this is going to keep your shield chance high. All right? There are going to be some veteran tanks here that are going to be yelling at me, oh, you should really be min-maxing Dark Ward. Don't. All right? Don't worry about that for right now. Just make sure you have your Dark Ward up. Because if your Dark Ward falls off, your ability to survive is going to be dramatically reduced. All right? I'd rather you be a little less squishy for the duration of the entire encounter than be perfectly fine and min-max and then be extremely squishy and get crushed because you forgot to refresh your Dark Ward. Right? If I haven't made this clear enough yet, smash Dark Ward on cooldown, please, until you get a little bit more comfortable with the spec. All right? And even now, I still just smash Dark Ward pretty much on cooldown. All right? All right. Now that we've covered the basics of Dark Ward, we have to understand the basics of damage types in Swelltor because our DCDs are very, very finicky. All right? There are three types of damage in Swelltor. The first is melee range damage that's any time you hit a target with a blaster or a lightsaber right so if i come up to this drummy here and i'm hitting the target you're going to see it's spouting this white damage that's melee range damage anytime you hit a target with a blaster or a saber or someone punches you in the face that's considered to be white damage now white damage is special because white damage can be completely dodged all right you have a chance to dodge the ability completely very nice, all right? White damage can also be reduced, which is also nice, because that way, even if you don't dodge the damage, you still have the chance to take less of it. Very, very good. Option number two, though, is called force tech damage. Most of the time, force tech damage comes in the form of big AoEs, especially in PvE. And then in PvP, it's gonna look like any force abilities or anything that is like a grenade or fire, right? Force tech damage is going to appear yellow to you. Anytime you use force ability or a tech ability, you cannot dodge this damage. All right? You can only reduce it. This is important because a lot of our defensive cooldowns are actually dependent on these two types of damage. All right? So we have to know what type of damage is coming and then pop our defensive cooldowns accordingly. All right? All right. 
The third type of damage is actually internal damage. It's damage over time. We don't really worry about it, all right? The only two that you need to know is melee range, which is like getting punched by a mob or getting shot at with a blaster. That can be dodged, that can be reduced, or force tech, which is usually a big AoE on the ground, or it's, you know, getting hit by a bolt of lightning. All right, that can only be reduced. I hope I've made this clear because our defensive cooldowns depend on it. At least some of them do. The first ones we're gonna talk about are pretty straightforward. The first is going to be our overcharged saver. Overcharged saver is, gives us 15 seconds of a flat 25% damage reduction, which is pretty fantastic, all right? We know that both melee ranged and force tech, white or yellow damage, can both be reduced so it's gonna work on pretty much all forms of damage. You're gonna reduce your damage you take by 25%. It's pretty nice. It also heals you back for 15% of your health. So it's a, it's a little mini heal. It's pretty fantastic, all right? We want to be using this anytime we're taking damage. It also has like a two minute cooldown. It's pretty convenient, all right? All right. The next defensive that we're gonna talk about here is our Recklessness. Recklessness grants us 30% shield absorption. So we talked before how our shield chance is affected by our dark ward. You can see here shield chance. Recklessness gives us 30% shield absorption. So that way, every time that we shield damage, we're actually taking even less damage. It's a pretty fantastic cooldown, especially combined with the utility. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here, Twilight Ward, where it's going to be giving us our recklessness back faster. And then combined with the legendary that I like in the dynamic force, we can be spamming this relatively frequently for that fat 30% absorb chance, all right? Both of these types of DCD will work on all forms of damage, all right? Anytime you're taking damage, you have no idea what it is, you will be safe popping both Overcharge Saber and Recklessness to kind of reduce that damage. Now, let's talk about our two kind of unique forms of defensive cooldown here. The first is Deflection. Deflection increases your range and melee defenses by 50%. So, thinking back to what we talked before, ranged melee defense, white damage, anytime you're getting punched, anytime you're getting shot, anytime that someone's gonna swing a saber at you, deflection will work on. It's gonna give you a flat chance to essentially reduce the damage that you take to zero, all right? It does very little to force tech damage. We don't really care about it. However, if you're getting hit in the face, it's pretty fantastic. It's also great for working on like bosses that have multiple bosses hitting you at once or large ad packs. It's very, very nice, all right? Um, it also gives you this little buff here called Mounting Defense, which is going to reduce the damage of force tech taken by all allies in the area. So it does a little bit, it helps a little bit, a little bit for force tech damage, but for the most part, just use it as a defensive whenever you're getting shot or stabbed. All right? All right. On the contrary to that, we have our Force Shroud. Force Shroud will purge all removable effects. So if you have a dot ticking on you, it'll get rid of it completely. And then it will give you a 200% chance to resist Force Tech attacks. So anytime that you have an AOE sitting at your feet, anytime you have a grenade sticking in your debuff tray, anytime you have a sorcerer that's going to hard cast a, a TB into you, pop for a shroud and you will resist the, the force tech attacks, all right? It's only useful on force tech though. If you're getting punched, it's gonna do nothing. If you're getting shot, it's gonna do nothing, all right? It's just only for force tech, all right? All right, let's walk through that one more time. Overcharge Saber, useful for everything, flat DR, fantastic. Recklessness, great for shield absorption, flat DR for everything, love to see it. Deflection, useful if you're getting shot or stabbed, melee range damage, very good for like large mob packs. And then finally, we have our Force Shroud, which is going to cleanse us from dots, which is very nice, and give you a chance to resist those Force Tech attacks. All right? All right. Additionally, we mentioned previously that Force Cloak is now going to give us two seconds of Force Shroud. So Force Cloak is a great way to cheese AOE mechanics. So if a boss puts a large red circle on the ground, it's gonna start ticking down. You can use Force Cloak to get out of it completely, which is pretty fantastic. You can also use Force Cloak to um, 
sorry, to cleanse effects from you, right? So if you have a dot taking your trade, you don't wanna have that dot anymore. Force cloak, boop, it'll disappear. However, it'll also drop your threat, which is kind of bad for us as a tank. So what you can do is you can like force cloak out and then immediately pull and taunt, which will instantly put you back towards the top of the threat meter to get the boss back on you, right? So if you have to use like the cleanse, the self cleanse for force cloak, just make sure that you have a taunt ready to follow it up because it will dump all of your threat. All right, all right. If you want to go hardcore, you can also pick up a shield adrenal. It, all, it works really good with uh, our shield chance. It's very fantastic. You can also use your med pack for a little bit of extra healing. That's more generic, but as a tank, it's probably nice if you have those in your inventory, all right? I'm gonna wrap the DCDs one more time because I know it's a lot, all right? All right, let's talk about it one more time. Most obviously, Dark Ward, smash it on cooldown. I, I still see like Nim tanks, like still smashing Dark Ward on cooldown just so they make sure they don't lose the extra shield chance, all right? Hit it on cooldown, cool. General purpose, overcharge saver, flat DR, very nice. Also a little bit of healing, very nice. Recklessness, a flat extra shield absorb chance. Works on everything, very nice. Deflection, shot, stabbed, deflected, all right? Force Shroud, kind of gives it away with the name, right? Force Shroud, Force Tech, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Anytime anything's on the ground, anytime you're getting hit with lightning, Force Shroud, all right? All right, and then if you need to, you can always cheese with Force Cloak because we have uh, the utility here called Shroud of Manus, especially when you have two cloaks, it's pretty helpful. All right, all right. Let's walk into a flashpoint or something and then we can give a little bit of a live demonstration of all these in action and then we can go home, all right? I know this is kind of a lot to swallow, but I promise it's, it's more straightforward than you think it is. All right, all right. All right, so we've loaded into this flashpoint and we've discovered a couple things using our star parts. The first is that Mr. Sathavir actually generates a whole boatload of threat. So we threw our guard onto him to prevent him from pulling threat off of us because he is pumping like an absolute mad lad. All right, all right. General tanking tips. Our goal is to line up all these people as quickly as possible inside of one little area to help our monkey DPS do AOE damage, all right? Our AOE damage on its own, not great, not terrible. Um, but if we can, we wanna be helping our DPS out. That's personally why I like overload. It helps us maneuver these monkeys as they come in, push some range into melee, pull some people into melee range. We wanna be essentially assembling massive stacks so that way our DPS can fluff and farm big AOE numbers, right? So we want to be generating threat, right? So we're gonna wait for all these guys to come in and we're gonna wither them and then discharge them and that should generate enough threat to stop them from running onto our DPS and then just boop, 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 do a whole bunch of damage and keep them on us as often as possible. Now, a lot of the times there will be like a, a aggro reset mechanic, especially in flashpoints. So just be you know taunting when people fall off of you. It's kind of fun. Now, again, we wanna be popping our defensive cooldowns effectively, right? So right here, I see a bunch of mobs running into me. I'm gonna pop deflection because I'm expecting these mobs to do a bunch of essentially melee range damage because they have fists. They you know they, they punch you in the face. So popping deflection, probably gonna be more useful. I don't see a lot of tech damage going out. So it's probably gonna be more helpful if I pop deflection. This is where knowing and understanding the different types of damage really starts to help out, right? Especially on a sin tank, it is your job to understand what type of damage you're gonna be taking and then pop the defensive cooldown accordingly, right? Right. All right, so we're gonna wait for all these guys to run in here first and then we'll pop our big wither and our discharge. You can see here, they started to run over to our sniper, but because we hit them with the gargantuan wither discharge, then they were all on me, right? That's kind of the goal. To be honest, tanking is a thankless job. No one really cares about your tank mechanics, right? No one's gonna say like, oh man, you are really good at tanking, right? You did a great job. Quick demonstration, we have, we have this dot on this. If we, if we cloak out, no more dots. Nice, all right. Back to what I was saying. No one cares about your tanking, all right? You are a bulwark for your team, uh, in theory. In practice, you are the dummy that decided to queue into tank. Now this comes with a couple of advantages though. For one, no one knows what, what mechanics that you're doing. So even if you're doing a terrible job, they're not gonna understand it, all right? That's both a good thing and a bad thing. 
because as a tank, you're kind of expected to know what all the fights are doing. Uh, and if you don't know, you're gonna have to learn from essentially someone who already who's already done it before, right? It's not like it's DPS where you can like, oh, we're all a bunch of monkeys here. We've figured it all out. Uh, you know, just hit the boss, stand with these people. You should be fine, right? We don't really have that luxury. You really have to sit down and probably learn from someone else before you like start venturing off on your own. But even if you have to start venturing off on your own, like it's fine because you can always blame the healer, all right? That is your back pocket card. Blame the healer when things go wrong because no one knows what you're doing anyway as a tank. So just blame the healer and you should be ready to rock and roll. That's kind of the, uh, the back pocket card you have if things go wrong. It's kind of all I have for this guide. I wanna give a quick shout out to Mr. Tran who uh, really helped me out. So I gotta click this. Who really helped me out with making this guide. You may remember him from our Q Dungeon Mechanics. He was our Apex tank. What an absolute legend. Thank you, dude, for, you know, putting me in the right path. Let's do a quick demonstration of like big AOE damage with Sin Tank because we can actually surprisingly do it if these bobs decide to spawn. There we go. So big wither into discharge. Be fantastic. Oh, I forgot to mention discharge. When you are hit, occasionally discharge will start to glow. If you shield and attack, it just means you're discharging to do more damage. All right? All right. That's kind of all you have to know. If it's glowing, kind of in the same way of everything else in the spec. If it glows, hit it, and then you're fine. All right? All right. I'm going to go to sleep now as the turret boss does its thing. I'm going to literally stand back here and do nothing. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'm sure your fellow players would appreciate it. And take care. All right. Ta-ta.